Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and Happy Halloween! Today is October 31st, 2015 and I would like to show you the books that I bought during the month of October. But first of all, I would like to show you a new addition to the family. I think I've mentioned in previous videos that we have several cats, but we have not had a dog in a couple of years. We had two older dogs and that have both passed away over during the past two to three years and um, we just took some time off from having a dog because we have really more cats than any one family should have. Um, my daughter Katie got her grades up uh, in a tremendous way and uh, we had promised her a phone. So we said, well, okay, we can get a phone. And she said, I don't want a phone, I want a dog. What kid doesn't want a smartphone? So uh, we were uh, excited to be able to add a dog to our family. So I wanted to introduce him to you. So along with having a dog comes a few destructive tendencies along the way. Our elderly next door neighbor passed away uh, several months back and as her family have been gradually cleaning out her house, they've been giving me the books. This is a book that I believe was from her house. It is um, Poe's Masterpiece of Mystery by Edgar Allan Poe. I was going to be very excited to take this to our book sale, which we just had at our library uh, last weekend, but um, the dog ate it. There were several pages completely ripped out and um, yeah, I mean it, it was an old book and not in great shape to begin with, but I was going to clean it up as best I could and uh, take it, um, but Bob happened. So um, anyway, let me introduce you to Bob. So this is my daughter Katie, who you met may have met in the Eggtastic Book Challenge. Katie, who do we have here? Let's show us his good side. <laughs> All right, so here is our dog, Bob. <laughs> um, he is officially Katie's dog, but of course, since he's the only dog in the family, he thinks he owns the place. Um, he's having he's having a little trouble adjusting to having uh, to living with cats, but we do have a crate which we can put him in when we're gone, and also for uh, sleeping and uh he's pretty silly so katie wanted her, show us his better side i don't need to see the we don't need to see the bob side <laughs> anyway bob is a catahoula leopard mix according to the spca which is where we got him from and uh he's a lot of fun and it was bob that ate the poe book so i'm sorry those of you who are edgar Allan poe fans all right so hey bob A bookish thing I got recently, uh, actually someone donated this along with some books to our Friends of the Library book sale and I decided I had to buy this for myself. This is wrapping paper that has books on it and I am so excited. This is so cute. I don't even want to use it. Let me hold it up where you can see. Now all of these books have come from library book sales. We had a gigantic library book sale at my library this past week actually uh, or last weekend and I was in charge of that. There was also a library about 45 minutes away from where I live that had a book sale the exact same weekend as my library. So I was lamenting the fact that I wouldn't be able to go until I realized that the first day, which was Thursday, our library closes at 6 and their library stayed open till 8. So I left our library at about 6.15 and uh, within the hour I was at the other library shopping for books. I was happy that when I got there their prices were even better than ours. Their paperbacks were 25 cents and their hardbacks were 50 cents and I filled up a bag with 25 and 50 cent books. I think I got four hardbacks and the rest were um, 25 cents and I spent about nine dollars. So you can do the math and figure out how many books that I picked up. That doesn't even come close to what I brought home from our library because on the last day of ours we did fill a bag for three dollars or fill a box for five and I did both in addition to picking up a few that I wanted to pay full price for at the beginning of the sale because I wanted to be sure I got them and not wait until the last minute. Oh and then just today this afternoon I had to go to the post office in another town because ours closed early and I had to stop by that particular town has a library bookstore. 
So, um, so I went in there and I found about four books that I bought. So this is just a hodgepodge of all the books that I bought this month. Uh, with the exception of Cozy Mysteries. I am doing my Cozy Mystery haul on a separate video. So I'm just going to go through the books very quickly and some of the miscellaneous books that I got. I'll first show you the ones that are middle grade or YA. This is The Road from Roxbury and from the series Little House, The Charlotte Years. There's a whole series about Laura Ingalls Wilder's mother and grandmother that are written about their uh, childhood and this is one of those books. I have not read any of them. They've been on my TBR for years and one of these days I'm going to get to them. I don't own any of them. I do own the series about Laura's daughter, Rose, and her childhood, but I don't have any of the Charlotte or Martha books until this one. So maybe this will motivate me to at least get them from the library next year and start reading them. I don't even know where this falls in the series, but um, it was at our library book sale and it was after it was like the last day and we were doing fill a bag so I thought I should put it in my bag. Alright something else I picked up that was 50 cents at a different library book sale is Apothecary by Maylee Malloy. This was one of the Florida Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists for last year and I did read it already and it's a very good book. It's a magical realism and I have since I've read this, I have found out that there is one or two other books in this series. So I, I had listened to this on audio. I don't remember a whole lot about it, and it was 50 cents. So I thought I should go ahead and pick it up and read it before I continue on with the series. I also picked up book one in the 43 Old Cemetery Road series. This one is called Dying to Meet You. I was just doing a video yesterday with my friend Rachel, who is the children's librarian at our public library, and she mentioned that this was the first Florida Sunshine State book that she read, and she loved it so much she read the whole series. And I just ran across it today at the library bookstore that I went to, so uh, since she liked it so much and we have similar tastes in books, I thought I would pick it up and give it a read. It looks very easy, it's uh, definitely for a younger audience. Um, like older elementary and it looks really fun so I'm excited to read it. Um, it almost kind of looks like a Halloween book. Maybe I'll read it tonight. And I finally have my very own Sarah Dessen book. This is The Truth About Forever. I have not read any Sarah Dessen so I keep hearing about her all over booktube and I decided I needed to pick this up. Alright, so adult fiction. I don't know anything about these books uh, but they looked interesting. So I got Around the Bend by Shirley Jump. On the Occasion of My Last Afternoon by Kay Gibbons. Dancing at the Harvest Moon by Casey McKinnon. The Starlight Drive-In by Marjorie Reynolds. Sometimes you just can't resist a book because it has a fun name and the cover is cute and I, uh, this is one of those books. Patty Jane's House of Curl by Lorna Lanvick. The Christmas Hope by Donna Van Leer. I have the Christmas Shoes and uh, I think there's another one in this series, The Christmas Blessing, which I don't have. A friend of mine at church has read these and just raved about them, said they were great. So I thought I would pick this up. This one I've seen around. I'm not sure I'm going to like this. Based on the synopsis inside the front cover, it may not be my cup of tea, but it's called The Floribama Ladies Auxiliary and Sewing Circle by Lois Battle. Um, I do like Southern humor, and it sounds like that's what this is. Uh, but it may be a little more irreverent than what I am partial to, so we'll see. So I continue to pick up books by Elizabeth Berg, even though I have yet to read one. I don't know if I'm going to like this author or not, but I do love the covers, and I hold out hope that I will enjoy these books. This is Home Safe and Joy School, again by Elizabeth Berg. I picked up a couple of golf books, not because they're golf, but I'll tell you why. The first one is by Carl Hyacin. He's a Florida author. The husband and I have read quite a bit of Carl Hyacin. So um, this one is The Downhill Lie. And neither of us play golf, but we do read Carl Hyacin. So this was at our library book sale, and I thought I would pick it up. This is also a golf book. It's called Dead Solid Perfect by Dan Jenkins. HBO did a movie adaptation of this book back in the 80s and I was an extra in that movie. So I do have another copy of this book that has um, the edition that has the movie picture on it and somewhere I hope I have the video. I'm not sure I do um, 
but I did see the video. I we checked it out back when we had video stores. We checked out the uh, we rented the video and watched it, um, and I could see myself. I knew exactly the scene where I was pretty sure that you could see me. Um, my cousin and I drove down to Dallas from our hometown in Oklahoma and spent the day. Actually, I think we worked on the movie two days, and it was a lot of fun. We're in the gallery uh, watching the golf games. And it was fun, we enjoyed it, and I thought it might be fun to read the book. I don't think this is my type of book, really, and the movie itself probably had some swearing and different things in it that I don't care for, but um, it was kind of a fun experience to be an extra in a movie. That was one of two movies that I have done while I was in college. Now this book, I didn't even let it make it out to the sale. I saw it and I knew I wanted to buy it before our sale even started. This is The Annotated Hobbit. So, of course, it's by um, J.R.R. Tolkien, and the annotations are by Douglas A. Anderson. It is so cool. I am just thrilled. I have never seen an annotated Hobbit before. Um, it's got illustrations, and of course, the annotations. And um, I, am, I haven't read The Hobbit in a few years, so I think that I will read it from here so I can read the annotations. I've been thinking I would like to reread The Lord of the Rings again maybe next year. I've read them at least three times and I've read The Hobbit at least twice. So uh, plus listen to them on audio at least once. And um, I think this is really, really awesome to have. I'm so excited. A few romances that I picked up. This is A Time for Home. It is a Snowberry Creek novel by Alexis Morgan. Um, it just seemed like a really pretty cover and I thought um, I would enjoy this. Sweet Tea for Two by Janelle Dellen and this is a Honey Grove romance. I seem to be on a kick with buying books that have my name in the title. I have at least two others and uh, that I've hauled in previous hauls. Okay, this one really got my attention though because this is called Elizabeth. A Royal Pain by Francine Pascal and I mean I couldn't help it I had to get this so last month I hauled some Harmony books by Jody Thomas and I found another one today at the same library bookstore where I bought the others this is can't stop believing and this is just as pretty as the others in fact this one looks brand new it doesn't even look like it's been opened uh, or read or anything and then a couple of other fiction books that I got this, this is a The Dearest Dorothy series. I don't know anything about it, but it looks fun. I enjoy humorous books. And this is Help, I've Lost Myself, and Are We There Yet? All right, a couple of classics I picked up at the uh, other library book sale that I went to uh, late one evening. This is a duology by Lucy Maud Montgomery, uh, the author of Anne of Green Gables. The first one is Pat of Silverbush, and the second one is Mistress Pat. And I have read these before, but did not have my own copies. Now I've talked before about Grace Livingston Hill, so I did not have my list inside the sale with me. I think it was in the car, but we had so little time to shop that I just ran in, and since there were only a quarter, and I found several Grace Livingston Hill books, I didn't worry about whether I had them or not, because if I have duplicates, I can give them to somebody, or put them in the little free library, or something like that. Um, but these are the ones I got. The Man of the Desert, The Gold Shoe, Stranger Within the Gates, the Christmas Bride, All Through the Night, The Story of a Whim, Found Treasure. Also just today at the library bookstore, I found another book by Isabella Alden, who was the mentor of Race Livingston Hill. This is number three in the series of um, her books. This is The Hall in the Grove. And then a couple of biographies I picked up this month. This is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Wall. Now I have already read this. I read this for book club early uh, this year, I guess in January. And I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, and I found this for a quarter, so I thought, if nothing else, I could pass it on to someone else because it's a great book. Another memoir I got was Charles Kuralt, A Life on the Road. So when we were pricing books for our book sale, I ran across this book. Now, I actually already have a copy of this book. Um, and I remember my cover was not nearly as pretty as this one. This is Does This Church Make Me Look Fat by Rhoda Jansen. And I thought, well, I have... I have no idea if the book is good. Uh, for one thing, I love the title. It's a great title. And um, and this is so much prettier than the one I already had. So I came home and I looked at my copy. And it's no wonder that my previous copy is not as pretty because it's an ARC. And I had no idea. So I'm planning to read this book. And if I want to keep this, 
then um, perhaps we'll pass this book on to some of my church friends or whoever might enjoy it. It's A Mennonite in a Little Black Dress. A Mennonite finds faith, meets Mr. Wright, and solves her lady problems. So uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. And then this one looked really interesting. This is a little tiny book. It's called On Your Marks, and it's all about punctuation. I absolutely love editing. I took some journalism classes in college, and I made an A in editing. And this is just looks like such a fun book. There are um, some, a few of the lesser used punctuation marks that um, are touched on in here and I thought maybe I could learn something because I don't know all there is to know about editing but I want to learn. A few other random nonfiction books that I picked up. This is The Love Dare by Stephen and Alex Kendrick. You may know, you may recognize this book if you saw the movie called Fireproof and the Kendrick brothers were the producers, I believe, of that movie and this is the book that is shown and talked about and basically acted out through the movie. So um, I don't know which came first, the book or the movie, but I, I think it looks really great. It is a, a good exercise for couples to go through, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Now, in case you didn't know, I grew up in Oklahoma, uh, just across the border from Texas, and I found this, Shadows on the Land, an Anthology of Texas Historical Marker Stories by Myra Hargrove McIlvain and it's published by the Texas Historical Commission and I thought it looked interesting. I have a lot of family and relatives in Texas and a lot of family history in Texas. So I will probably read this and then um, see if my genealogy library in my home county in Oklahoma would like to have it. If they already have one, then um, I may pass it around to other people in my family. I have a copy of the One Minute Manager and I need to take a minute and read it, uh, but this is the One Minute Manager Gets Fit and I definitely need to work on that. This looks fun. Why do clocks run clockwise and other imponderables? So this is by David Feldman and this just looks like a lot of fun. It asks questions um, like, uh, why don't people get goosebumps on their faces? I don't know. When a company sells lobster tails in a restaurant and stores, what do they do with the rest of the lobster? I don't know. So there's just fun, fun questions and answers in there. This one is the most fun of all. The Essential Book of Useless Information. The Most, Im the most Unimportant Things You'll Never Need to Know by Don Voorhees. Oh, I think this looks hilarious. A couple of Christian books. I got the 52 Fun Family Devotions. This book I got based solely on the title. God Has Never Failed Me, But He Sure Scared Me to Death a Few Times by Stan Toller. I love this title. I think that is all of the books that I got this month except for Cozy Mysteries and I'm going to show you those in a different video because I'm sure this video is already getting pretty long and I don't plan to get any more books for a while until I get some of these read. I don't believe in book buying bans. If I see a book that I really want I'm going to get it but because I usually buy used books or secondhand books, I am not really spending an outrageous amount of money on books. Uh, but I did get one brand new book this month and that was The Sword of Summer and I had a fun time doing it. That was a lot of fun and uh, so be sure you check out that video and I hope you enjoyed meeting Bob, our new dog. Katie wants me to start introducing some of our cats to you so I may do that in future videos. We have some, some fun cats and uh, they're not getting along with Bob too well um, and Bob likes to bark at them. There's never a dull moment around our house anymore but hopefully Bob will get used to the cats at some point and the cats will get used to him so that we can have our calm house back again. <laughs> um, so that's all of the books I have to show you for this video. So happy Halloween. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.